Can you see my presentation? Oh. Not yet. Hmm. Hold on a second. All right. Now? Yes. Yes, we receive their presentation. Great. Hello, everyone. Nice to see so many of you here. Uh, I don't have to introduce myself. Ines already did it. So let's get to, to the presentation. So today I'm going to talk about uh, Git and GitHub and R. It's really an introduction. I don't know how many of you have heard of or worked with Git. Can you, can you give me a hint just to see who, I, who I'm talking to? Yep, barely interacted with it. I only know the basics of it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, if you know about Git, this presentation may not be so may not bring something very new to you. But who knows? Maybe we are learn we will learn something from each other. And if you just heard of uh, of Git or have you haven't worked with it. I think um, this is for you because I want to show you how easy uh, it is to to get started with it. And in the end, uh, how, uh, how much it can help you uh, in your projects, uh, if, even though they are individual or uh, a collaboration. So let's get started. What is Git? Uh, Git, Git is basically a software, a piece of software which can be installed on your computer. Uh, it's a version control systems, system, which means that um, it keeps track of anything that happens in your specific project. Uh, a specific Git project is actually called a repository, so it keeps track of everything. So if you are here, you are uh, most likely working with uh, data with uh, uh, spreadsheets, maybe with reports and with code. And Git Git helps you really organize uh, the the um, um, what uh, the the historical of your uh, of your steps. Okay, so it's a free and open software. It runs on every relevant, I would say, platform in the market: Unix, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. I personally personally only worked uh, in Ubuntu and Windows with it. Um, and it's integrated with uh, remote hosting services. I will talk more about them later, but they're basically like a Dropbox with a twist that hosts your uh, code and uh, help you collaborate uh, with, with other people. Okay. So what is GitHub? Because we have Git and we have GitHub. Uh, when, whereas Git is the piece of software that stays on your computer, GitHub, that it's actually a site, immediate. a big site that um, Hello. I think something happened. OK. So um, uh, GitHub uh, can host your, uh, your uh, project. So it's a home for your Git-based projects on the internet. It allows other people to see your stuff, to sync with you, to comment what you're doing, and maybe even uh, modify uh, if you let them. And it has a really, really cool interface that also integrates tools that help you get organized. And we'll, you'll see later what I'm talking about. And what about our studio? We are at Our Ladies. So uh, uh, we have to talk about R and how uh, GitHub and Git integrates with R. Uh, I don't know how many of you know, but uh, R has a really pretty nice um, interface, uh, uh, graphical interface that connects to Git as well as GitHub, uh, as your uh, GitHub account. And uh, helps you uh, work with your, your code and actually uh, publish what you have on GitHub. OK, so in the end, why would you like to use Git and GitHub? 
And for this, I think a picture is like a million words. I bet you've been in the situation in which you've worked for a, for a project or a report or a, a code and uh, you, <laughs> you just have a version that you think is final and then you send it to your manager or maybe your, uh, your colleague and they said, hmm, here's a piece of feedback and the feedback is like uh, in, a, in a chat or I don't know, in a word, something and you have to correct something based on your feedback. And then you end up with millions, millions of versions of the same file, which you, I'm sure you will not be able to administrate as well as you think, because we, when things get big, they can get messy also. And that's what Git, GitHub solves. It, uh, GitHub, Git and GitHub solve. They, keep, they um, keep track of all the changes in your project without you having to have different versions and having to administrate them. Okay, so advantages, if you work in a team, uh, you, ha you can collaborate with, uh, with your teammates, you can share your code, comment on, uh, based on it and update it in real time. You can back up your code because your colleagues will have a version of the code on their own computers and uh, you will have also a version of the code on uh, GitHub. And uh, yeah, uh, you, you make sure that if something fails, you have you'll have a backup. Backup. Uh, it helps you organize and delegate, and I'll show you how later. And you can see who was responsible for what. You can actually track the track the progress of your team through their commits, through their activity uh, on uh, on on the project. But Git and GitHub also work when you are uh, alone. Well. Uh, it helps you expose yourself because if you publish your personal projects on uh, a platform like GitHub, you will see that uh, the employer will be more satisfied because um, you, it, they, people can actually see your work ethic through your, uh, your progress on GitHub. They can see how you write code, how, uh, how many projects did you have, and you can communicate a lot more through GitHub uh, than uh, through an hour of interview. It can also help you back up your stuff if you lose it. Uh, it helps you keep track of your own progress. You make, you make yourself accountable if you want to start a new project. It helps you organize yourself and uh, you will eventually have to learn GitHub because uh, GitHub, actually Git, because it's, uh, it's really universal. If you know Git and something about GitHub, you can work on other hosting services too. So, um, we, I chose GitHub because that's what I use and for specificity, I wanted to talk about one uh, hosting uh, service. So yeah, at, at least at one point in your, in your life, you will have to know Git and trust me, you'd better know it before you need it because when you have to uh, learn it under pressure, it's a little bit difficult. Okay. It also has disadvantages, I won't lie to you. It's a little bit difficult to set it up at first because it's a really secure way to, to uh, manage your stuff. So you have to have some secret keys, uh, a special account. So you, you should uh, get on track really fast, but it can be a little bit frustrating at, uh, at the beginning. It has a specific vocabulary, which is really concise. So I don't know, it's a, uh, there's a disadvantage and an advantage too, because once you, you learn it, it will be easy peasy. Uh, and more complicated actions may require interaction with the common line. You have merge conflicts because if you work with multiple people on the same uh, project and you will eventually want to join your work, you will have to <laughs> be careful because there may be some conflicts in files and you have to be able to solve it. That's why. Uh, my uh, my colleagues like to say, uh, um, I don't know how to translate it in English, but it's like uh, you should have as many commits as short as possible. So that's how you can actually uh, manage merge conflicts seem easier. All right. Here I left a little basic Git vocabulary. Um, I'm not sure this is more for you. Uh, I can... Uh, explain every um, uh, keyword on uh, while we are doing the tutorial. 
but you can always come back to this if you if you want to refresh your memory. And um, right. just one thing, we will post the presentation as well afterwards. So in case, yeah, they uh, want to review something, they can get back to, to the presentation, right? Yes. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Thank and you. there are also resources at the end. So uh, yeah, if you... Mm -hmm. Okay, but what you have to keep in mind is that there are some basic uh, actions. The big actions for Git are upload and download. You upload your work on uh, Git and GitHub, uh, on GitHub with Git, actually, and you download your work uh, in order to collaborate with others. In order to upload, you have basically three actions which uh, are done in this order. You add your files, you stage them, you commit them. This means you make a snapshot of your version of the code in that specific moment. It's something that you want to save and you push your work to GitHub. GitHub. And if you want to download, you clone your project. Well, I'll show you. You fetch uh, the changes. So you make your computer aware of the changes that happened on your project on GitHub. And then you pull the changes locally. Uh, you'll see how this happens. Um, what should I add is that these actions have to be done explicitly. G GitHub doesn't do it if you don't say so. So you, uh, you have the control in the end. This is a basic flow. So we let's say we have a project that has a, a master uh, branch, a master version of uh, your code. It's the final version. And if someone wants to add a feature, I don't know, uh, to, to do something new, they can uh, go with a parallel version of the project without disrupting the, the master version of the project and add their commits, these little circles. And in the end, uh, merge their work with a with the master. So in the end, this is the big picture. So everyone in a, in a team has a, our, our studio, that's the, the specific case because we are, we are we're talking about our projects. They have a version of, uh, of the project locally uh, and they interact with, in, with the central remote repo, Adika, where uh, I mean with uh, uh, with a source of truth, which is hosted by GitHub, which is, which is actually a site, a big site. All right. Uh, so let's roll our sleeves and uh, let's go to the tutorial. We will create a very, very simple RStudio project, which will also be a GitHub repo. We will uh, interact uh, with uh, Git commands and we will see how GitHub looks. And uh, I would like to make it as a story. I think we, we all uh, learn uh, easier from stories. So let's say you have to have to make a project with with some people. GitHub. I go to my personal uh, GitHub account. Okay. So we want. I want to make a new project. I will start the project. Let's say it's our ladies seat. Uh, okay. It's a public project, but you can also make it private. It's, it's your choice. I choose to make it public. A readme file will contain a, a small description of the project. The git ignore file uh, lets you specify if you don't want to share some, I don't know, some secrets or maybe some data, you can put it in Git ignore and it, it won't be shown on a GitHub and choose a license. It tells people what they can do with your code. So I create a new repository. All right, and I have a main branch. It's the only one for, for the moment. Now, what I want to do is I want to couple it with my RStudio project. So I'm going to RStudio. Uh, uh, you can see, can you? Yes. Yes, we can see your... Um... I... Yeah, but we lost her. <laughs> we lost her? Yeah. Uh, so. However, we don't see your R studio. Yeah, I think uh, somehow she disconnected. 
Okay, did you see? Ah, can you? We we can't see yeah. your uh, your art studio. Oh, okay, I will change the share screen. I guess this is what I have to do. Okay, did you see something on GitHub? We we saw so the last thing we saw Anna was um, the GitHub repo you created, and then we unfortunately lost you. Ah. Great, and you saw that in the share screen uh, settings. Now you can. can okay. Can you see something? Mm hmm. Yes. It's an R studio, isn't it? My repo on GitHub. And now I will I will uh, select version control. It's Git or subversion. Honestly, I've, I've never worked with subversion, so I will select Git. I will put uh, in the URL for my um, project. Okay, the project uh, is, uh, uh, the, the project's name is completed automatically and I'm creating the project. Now it's cloning, so it's copying the, the project locally. Great, so now I have an R project. And let's say I want to add something about, uh, about the project. This is in uh, README, you'll see how it looks like on GitHub. This is my R ladies demo hello every okay now i saved it and i want to post it on uh, on github how do i do it you'll see this little button here and now i have the interface for, for Git. I select the, the file I changed and it shows what I changed. I put a little commit message. I added readme. I commit. And now I push it to GitHub. All right, let's see if it worked if it shows up on GitHub. Uh, uh, Anna Maria, excuse yes? me, your last steps uh, were not on um, our studio, right? Because everything we see now is our studio and the last thing you have typed. And yes, they were. Uh, ah, I have. Yeah. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, I have multiple screens. Okay, I'll show it again. Yeah. So, hello everyone. Oops. So, I, I typed hello everyone and I add something more. Hello again. <laughs> you can see our studio, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to the version control button, which is here. I select commit. And now I'll, sh I'll change the screen. I have to change the screen uh, every time I. Uh, yeah, because it window. opens a new yep. a new window. This this section. And now I select the file that I changed. You can see that it says what I've done here. I put a new commit message. I say I updated. Readme. I press commit one file changed and I push it to GitHub. Now let's see if, uh, if it, uh, it worked. Uh, you see GitHub, don't you? Yes, I, I see the, can git, see? the yeah. GitHub, yeah. And so, you can see what I wrote. Mm-hmm, yeah. I can. All right, now. Uh, let's say that you want to um, delegate someone to do something. You can create an issue on GitHub and say, uh, 
I don't know. Uh, okay. And I can submit a new issue. And oh, my internet connection is not stable. Can you can you still see my uh, my screen? Yes. I, I think uh, you are showing us the, the GitHub, right? Can you hear us? Okay. What's up with my internet connection? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I created an issue and I will assign myself because I'm the only one working on this project. And I will, uh, let's say, open a branch for, uh, uh, for the new feature. New feature. Okay. Now, if I want to implement the new feature, let's say, I go back to our studio and I will change the screen again. Uh, can you give me a feedback and tell me if you're seeing our studio? Yeah, every once in every once in a while we kind of lost you, and that's what happens. But yeah, we can see the art studio right now. I was one. I was wondering if you do. You need me to. Can you show us again? There is a question. Maybe it makes sense uh, to show yes. us how you activated the the Git. If it's not to just so people uh, can. No problem. The you actually activated the. Um, the debug or under debug so we, yeah, we have try a, ah uh, here yes yeah this one uh, can you see it it's really really small it's like mm, a yes. plus and a minus that one that was the question isn't it uh yeah and uh, I don't think you need to install Git ahead. I, I can't recall. Yeah. To install Git ahead, you need to have it on your um, personal yes. machine. And if you're starting a new yeah. project, you need to activate it from our studio. So just go under tools. I think it's tools, global options or project options. And you'll see there the um, need for activating. So I think it's project options, if I'm not mistaken. Project, try try that, yeah. Yeah, I had it uh, already activated. Yeah, we just it's want same, to know same here. Us. Yeah, exactly. So you need to. And here account. I have my account. Yeah. Um, as the yep. default, the version control system above it is set to none, so you just need to switch it to Git. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Simona. Thank you, Simona. <laughs> yes, I pre I pre. He uh, set my uh, my git. So yeah, great question. I think it uh, it needed to be covered. Can you still hear me? Yes, we hear. All right. I I'm asking for feedback once in a while because I see that I have some problems with my connection. So now what I want to do is create a new script on uh, the new brand. So I'm going uh, to the the Git uh, GitHub uh, interface again. I'll show you. I'm pulling the new branch I just created on GitHub. It says new branch, new feature. I'm switching to it. Okay, and now. Oops. Uh, 
I'm going back to our studio. I'm creating a new script. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes, we can. Okay. So I created the new script and now I want to push it. And now uh, keep in mind that I have it on, the, on, a, on a parallel branch. So I don't have it on uh, the main uh, version of the project. I select my script, which I just, uh, I'll show you. So I set my script, uh, my script, I commit. And I push it. OK, now we should go back to GitHub. Can you see GitHub? We are seeing the, the, the Google screen. Maybe it freezed. Anna, can you still uh, hear us? I think we lost her or something. Yeah, it certainly feels so. Just to clarify, because uh, until we, uh, Anna, get back uh, yeah, I think she, she lost completely the connection. Um, because we have a question, so until she reconnects, otherwise we'll move, uh, we'll move ahead if she isn't uh, able to, to rejoin. Uh, there is a question if we need um, GitHub desktop. So these are uh, different um, things. Uh, in order for you to connect to GitHub via R Studio, you just need to install Git and the free sent the link uh, in the chat. Okay, so Anna is back. And uh, after um, you install the Git, you need to have R Studio, you need to have, of course, R installed ahead. And um, this should be. Uh, sufficient. You don't need GitHub desktop. This is different. This is a tool uh, dedicated specifically for uh, interacting with GitHub via Windows. But uh, Anna showed us uh, the part in which you um, uh, connect via RStudio. So there are uh, several options in which you, you can do that. One of, uh, one of them is uh, using RStudio. Anna, are you back with us? Is your connection better? I'm back. I don't know what's happening with my Yeah, connection. you know. I don't know. Yeah. You know the uh, new code. Uh, you're uh, on mute. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the last step I wanted to show you, if uh, it's all right. Uh, yeah, so we can, uh, if it's OK also with free, I would propose to stay a few minutes. Uh, behind mm. is it okay actually i i uh -huh. just wanted to show you uh that it's uh it's uh, um, what i modified the script that i uh, i wrote uh, the script the hello world print um, script that i wrote it's on github and uh yeah i can i think it's better if i i tell you because i expect to have problems so i don't have to hold the meeting too too long so you can work in parallel on multiple branches as I showed you and in the end you can make a pull request on github 
you can comment, you can uh, uh, request feedback from your peers and they can say, hey, change something here, change something there. They, they, they themselves can change something. And then in the end, you can merge what you've did into the master branch and uh, uh, go on with your projects without project, without, uh, without interference, without uh, conflicts and so on and everybody sees what you've did so yeah that was uh, the story in the end i'm sorry i didn't have the chance to finish it the way i wanted it was really really good anna so uh, i think it, it was uh, helpful i know you also prepared some uh, useful links in your uh, uh, presentation that i will share afterwards so people can uh, yes. start and they uh, also discover please yes and uh i know uh, um there's a step i wanted to focus on the benefits of uh, github but of course there's a step in which you set up all your keys you make an account and uh, i uh, i made sure i put those steps into my presentation also so that you can go through the tutorial itself uh, uh, by yourself but uh, the message was the fact that you can do lots of nice things with Git and GitHub and you, it really helps you collaborate. And I work with it every day and saves a lot of energy. Thanks, thanks a lot, Anna. It's, uh, it's really useful to have such uh, discussions and to step uh, ahead on uh, topics like this. As you saw, only the, the part of starting with the uh, Git, it, Git and GitHub using RStudio, it's challenging. We have questions in the chat on that uh, topic. So um, I think we just, uh, you know, uh, put some uh, uh, sugar, but still we, we didn't get yeah. to, to that point. This is something we uh, need to discover on our own. I mean, uh, this, this was the idea. Uh, I don't know if we still have of three minutes or um, we have a question if you could uh, um, it's uh, regarding if, I think you you answered but uh, we still uh, we still have it so if I fork a repository uh, and in the meantime the master repo got changes commits how to update it uh, in my personal copy the master is someone else else's repo uh I think you have to merge the changes that were made from the master. And then if you want to actually uh, commit your changes to the master to come back with, uh, with your own changes, changes, you will have to make a pull request, uh, ask for a review, and uh, uh, the, the owner should be able to approve your pull request and merge what you did with the master. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Thank you, thank you again, Anna. I uh, suppose uh, our timing is uh, done for the subject, but um, uh, feel free to ask questions after, uh, follow, after the following presentation. We still have some time uh, left for questions for both speakers, so uh, don't hesitate to, to come back with questions later. Free, if you are uh, ready, uh, give me a sign. So, yeah, uh, sure. I can I don't, share my screen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did I give you the co-host? Oh, no. Not Sorry. yet. I, I planned but forgot along the way. So you should have... Uh, I just have to... Yeah. Uh, one second. Yeah. I just... Uh, no, no, it went away. Ah, the button is... Currently, it's it's hidden. the one. Yeah, it's the green. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> for me. <laughs> it's it's always hidden under something. So okay, now share. Okay, great. Okay, you you can see like the repository, right? And now you can see my slides. Yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ines, for inviting me. And Anna, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I also sometimes give um, presentations about Git and I know it's so challenging and then now in a virtual environment and then with the internet connection. So 
um, well, uh, good job, even though, um, yeah, despite the technical problems. Um, yeah, and I, it was a good primer for my talk because I will also talk a bit about Git and what I did with it in um, the context of this project. Um, so yeah, I will talk about using R and the Raspberry Pi to collect social media data, very basic social media data, I have to say. Um, and uh, yeah, I think Ines already said some things about me. Um, uh, I'm a, a little, originally I studied political science at some point, and uh, then I turned to data analytics and data science during my bachelor, bachelor's degree. And um, then I worked um, after my master's degree, I worked a bit in IT consulting um, and was basically a software developer. And uh, now I work for Correlate which I will also talk a bit about. Um, but uh, yeah, right now I would say I'm not so much interested in like data science as um, in modeling and machine learning. Yeah, I'm mostly, I'm mostly interested in finding solutions to yeah, um, more data engineering. So moving data, uh, making data accessible um, and stuff like that, but all with very basic tools. Um, yeah, because right now I work for Correlate, which is a nonprofit, so we don't have a lot of um, yeah, big enterprise solutions available for us. Yeah, I've been using R since 2013 or 2015. Depends a bit on whether you count uh, the first year where I had my first R class and I did not understand anything. It was just very confusing to me. Um, and in 2015, I kind of started um, uh, properly. Yeah, and I've been volunteering for Correlate since 2015, and uh, yeah, now I work full time since February, and I actually mostly work uh, work as a COO, so I mostly do organizational things, um, organizing projects, but I also get to code at some um, opportunities. So, what is uh, this Correlate that I keep talking about? Correlate is a German. Uh, slash European, we have some chapters um, in France and the Netherlands, Data for Good Network with over 1,500 volunteers. And we have uh, three, three things that we do. Um, we do Data for Good projects with external nonprofit um, organizations, and those are pro bono. So our volunteers do those um, Data for Good projects for the nonprofit organizations for free. Um, Another focus we have is on education. So the project projects in itself are also educational because you learn something about data science, you can apply your skills in a real life scenario. But we also do meetups, uh, Tidy Tuesday hangouts. Um, today is one after this meetup, I will go to the Tidy Tuesday hangout. Um, we do workshops, uh, we have an annual conference, which was just two weeks ago. And I uploaded the videos um, yesterday, I think. So you can have a look at the videos. There's also a lot of R content on there. And the third uh, thing that we do is we try to initiate a dialogue with a society about the benefits of um, data for good. And for me personally, um, Correlate has always been an excellent opportunity to try out new things because even when I was volunteering, I was um, not doing, not working in the Data for Good projects. I was um, working on our infrastructure, on our technical infrastructure. So it was always like a nice way to try out new technologies or new R packages. And uh, yeah, the project that I'm talking um, about today is also one of those projects where, uh, where I just got the opportunity to try something out. So about this project, the um, use case was that back in 2017, um, we, uh, we had a new website and we wanted to show some um, nice graphs. And uh, one of those graphs was to, supposed to be something like this. So um, here, I don't know, maybe it's not, uh, uh, not, high re not, uh, not a good resolution. So I will explain. So you have on, on the X axis, you have the time and on the y-axis, you have the number of followers uh, or likes or subscribers. So um, back then, we were interested in our Facebook likes, in our newsletter subscribers, and in our Twitter followers. And this was supposed to be 
kind of the graph that we wanted to have on our website, it looked uh, way better because um, my colleague La Jan, he did it in JavaScript. I was just um, supposed to make the data available to him and he would do it um, in JavaScript. So, <clears throat> and uh, due to the limitations, for example, of the Twitter API, uh, we had to collect the data by hand. So, um, for example, in Twitter, you cannot uh, get the historical data for your account. You always have to go to your account and uh, get uh, the follower account and then store it somewhere. And uh, next day you go there again and you store your follower account and so on. And so this is why uh, we needed a solution for that, which was supposed to be automat automated as well. So <laughs> what are the requirements for such an automated data collection? So from my point of view, there are like four things. Um, so first we need some kind of um, hardware where we run our code on. This could be like, could also be your laptop, but this is not very convenient if you want to turn off your laptop, you cannot do automated data collection anymore because uh, yeah, then the computer doesn't run. Um, then you need some form of um, yeah, program that automatically executes your code at regular intervals. Um, then we need a way to store the data. And in our case, um, there was also the additional requirement that it was uh, like easy access, right? It should not be somewhere deep down on a server where you have to log in like five times before you can access the data. It needed to be very easily accessible um, because yeah, Jan needed to access it from the website. And uh, last, of, last but not least, it was also um, yeah, important that we know when something went wrong because I mean, one of the um, advantages of automating things is that you can forget about it, right? If you um, automate something, um, it's probably because you're lazy and um, I, I'm a very lazy person. So I just want to um, <laughs> automate something and then be like, okay, this is now the computer takes care of it, right? Um, but the downside is um, if you forget about it and then something goes wrong, you don't notice it unless you have some way to um, yeah, let yourself know. Uh, so this was also a requirement. And yeah, for the first part for the machine kind of, um, I used the Raspberry Pi. And so I have actually quite a collection of Raspberry Pis. Um, so this is the one that uh, the code is running on. I don't know, you can maybe see the light. Um, oh no, cannot put it, but here's like an LED light uh, that yeah. is blinking. So this is the one that is currently running uh, the code. And then I also, yeah, but for a closer look, so what is a Raspberry Pi for everyone who's not familiar? It's, um, it's a very small computer. So uh, this is actually not the smallest model I own. This is the smallest model and it's um, that's a, a fully fledged computer. So you can uh, actually plug uh, that into your monitor and your um, um, into your monitor and into your um, keyboard and uh, use your mouse with it. So um, you can use it like a, like a, a modern computer. Um, and there's a large open source community around it. So there are many, many project ideas you can do from sensor uh, stuff like measuring humidity in your plants or something like that um, to building small robots uh, with those computers. And they're also quite affordable. So I think this one was only like 10 to 15 euros with like uh, all the accessory uh, with all the stuff needed. Um, and yeah, there, there are also newer models which are a bit more powerful, which cost, cost like 110 euros, but you get eight gigabytes of RAM for that. Um, so yeah, they're quite affordable. And uh, yeah, this is what I used for the computing, for the hardware kind of. And uh, for the <clears throat> program that uh, runs your code at certain intervals, um, their cron jobs come into play and cron jobs are yeah, very important. And um, I think this quote is, says, it, says it quite well. Cron is one of the most useful utilities that you can find in any Unix-like operating system. 
that is used to schedule commands at a specific time. And these commands or tasks are known as cron jobs. So this is exactly what we need, right? We want to have our R code run at a specific intervals at a specific time. And cron jobs allow us to do exactly that. And uh, so how do you define such a cron job? You have um, this weird expression down here. So you have five spots. Um, one is for the minute where you want the, the command to be executed. One is for the hour. One is for the month, uh, the day of the month. One is for the month and then the day of the week. And, um, <laughs> and then the command that you want to execute. So in, the, in our case, the command, uh, the cron job is defined like this. So I run it every day. So every day is with this star here, every month and every day, just every day, every month, every, yeah, <laughs> every day of the month at, um, yeah, almost at midnight. So at the end of the day. So of course, this is not perfect. There could be like a follower uh, following us at like um, two minutes to midnight, but yeah, I don't need like a very high uh, accuracy for this data, it's just for, getting a, a, a feel for, for our uh, follower developments. And then the command that we want to execute is um, that we want to run R. And this might, uh, this looks a bit unfamiliar if you're not so um, used to running R outside of R Studio, but this is how you can run an R script if you don't run inside um, if you don't use R Studio, at least on Linux. Um, yeah, so this is the thing that we that I used for the um, automation. Um, there were actually several um, versions of this project, and I will try to talk about all of them. Uh, I will keep keep an eye on the time. Um, so the first one was back in 2017. I did a first version in R on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and then there was a second version in 2018 in AWS Lambda. Um, and then there was, for two years, there was nothing because we didn't have this page on the website anymore, I think. And uh, yeah, now for this talk, I had a look at the code again and um, rewrote some stuff and now it's actually running again. So that's a nice side effect of giving a talk at uh, our ladies, you get to update your code. And uh, I also gave another talk. Um, so I also linked to that recording in the slides. Um, it's similar to what I will talk about now, but maybe, yeah, you can have a look at it. So the first version, um, this is the diagram for that. So what do we have? So here's um, this in the, can you see the mouse? Yes, we can see it. Okay, that's good. Uh, so here we have the Raspberry Pi. This is this box. And then within the Raspberry Pi or on the Raspberry Pi, we have Crone. And um, Crone executes the R, R script. So exactly what I, um, the um, definition that I just showed you. And the R script then uh, goes to Facebook, to the Facebook API, to the Twitter API and to MailChimp and gets uh, the data and um, yeah, just simple one, one value per service. So not like posts or tweets or something crazy, just one number, right? Because that's all we need in this project. And then I do some pre-processing in R and uh, write it out to two data uh, storage um, storages. One that was um, hosted MongoDB uh, which was a bit unorthodox, I think, um, because the data did not require a no SQL, but that's what I knew back then. And um, so that's why I used it. Um, and the other thing was an FTP server. And um, that's maybe not so important to know what that is right now. And yeah, let's have a look at the script because um, I think, uh, yeah, I will talk about, uh, no, let's just first uh, talk a bit about the summary. So yeah, we have the Raspberry Pi, we have Crone, we have this MLAB database, and we don't have a way to notify myself, right? So if something went wrong, I would never know. 
Um, this is also why I upgraded the code later. And um, yeah, there were quite some problems with this, obviously. Um, looking back, uh, code quality was not good. Uh, this is always the case if you uh, have programmed for more than one year, you will know that. Uh, looking back on your own code is always um, <laughs> bad. So um, yeah, so it, it's quite messy. And we will have a look at it in a second. Um, but there was also a bigger problem and that was when I open sourced the code um, like two months ago, there were like uh, authentication details in files and it was a big mess uh, to clean up the Git repository. Um, so that was definitely not good practice. Um, yeah, so just very quickly have a look at the code to show you that it was just one big um, R, R script. So um, this is what it looked like. I mean, I, I did a good job at commenting, I have to say. So um, yeah, there is a setup uh, where I do a very dirty hack with a set VD. Um, I get uh, the Twitter data with uh, the old Twitter package, TwitR, um, and uh, get the data from uh, MailChimp and uh, data cleaning, Facebook, um, I don't know what that is. Yeah, so Facebook was quite uh, quite hard to do. Yeah, I, st I still remember that, that was a nightmare. And yeah, then in the end, I write it out to the database here. This is that. Yeah, so um, as you can see, it was um, one big kind of messy R script. So I wanted to work on that and I will come back to that later. But first um, I will talk a bit about the totally different thing. I hope it's still interesting to, to, um, to everyone, even though we are an R meetup, I asked Ines and she said I should still include it. I mean, I can also skip it if there's not enough time. Ines, what do you think? I, I think you, you should uh, present us because uh, okay. in the end, uh, it's also about the journey you have. So it's good to, mm -hmm. Anyway, it could okay, be I will, I will. general, so. Yeah. Okay, so um, something that uh, triggered uh, also this uh, update of the code was that I started working at uh, the IT consulting company that I mentioned. It's called Codecentric. And in the first half year of 2018, I learned a lot of new technologies. And as I said earlier, this is always when I go to correlate and just look for a project where I can use my new skills. And so um, the new version looked uh, like this. So what is different? I mean, I, ex I exchanged uh, the database for like a, no, uh, for a proper SQL database, which is more appropriate to the data anyway. But yeah, more importantly, the Raspberry Pi was gone. So um, sad Raspberry Pi. And instead now I used something called AWS Lambda and uh, Python. But the uh, structure is still the same, right? So there is a, there's like um, a new robot in town kind of, but I still get the data from the services and I still write it out somewhere. So what is AWS Lambda? Lambda. So this is quite a long text. You don't have to read it. I will um, talk you through it. <clears throat> so. First, I have to drink something. <clears throat> uh, so this is quite a lot. Um, AWS Lambda is event driven, which means that it only runs responding to an event. And interestingly, this event can be a crone job. Um, and uh, of course, as we know, crone uh, is the thing that allows us to execute things at a certain time. So. Um, when we contrast this with the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi is always plugged in, right? It's always running. And um, I mean, if it's in my flat, I only have to pay like a little bit for ele ele electricity. If it's in the cloud, uh, you can also get um, an EC2 instance on AWS for free. So that's not a bit big problem, but um, yeah. Uh, AWS Lambda only runs your code if it's triggered. So there's like an event, it triggers AWS Lambda and then the code is run and then it's shut off again. So this is why it's also very cheap because you only pay for the time that the code, uh, the code is actually run, running. 
It's a serverless, which means that the underlying servers are managed by AWS. Um, uh, so we don't have to take care of that. Uh, by the way, um, maybe if we have some beginners, AWS is like a, one of the big cloud um, computing providers. So um, if you have heard of the cloud um, TM, then um, AWS is probably the biggest um, provider of services in this area. And AWS Lambda is one of their services. And um, Lambda was also developed to uh, make um, developing smaller on-demand applications easier. And those are called functions, which can be a bit confusing because we know functions to be something different. But yeah, those small applications that are run when something is triggered are called functions. And yeah, those are the files that are required for the, for the application. So here we have, um, uh, we'll focus on this here. Um, we have a daily pie, which contains the function to collect the data and to upload it to the database. And then we have some shell scripts. Um, we have requirements txt, which is, you might be familiar with if you know Python. And we have uh, this serverless YAML, which is quite important. And <laughs> what is serverless? Um, serverless allows you to define those Lambda functions um, in a YAML file and uh, makes deployment to AWS very easy. So YAML, yet another new thing maybe for some of you. YAML is the file format. It's maybe like JSON, most comparable to JSON, um, but yeah, it's just a file format and you write um, data or uh, statements in a certain way. So you have this indentation. Um, yeah, uh, it's a bit messy to work with, but it's something that is uh, used quite a lot nowadays. And um, yeah, so here we define our function. We call it daily correlate analytics and we give it a handler function. This is the function that is run when we trigger the um, Lambda function. And we take it from this daily pie file, when you look back um, one slide um, from this file, we take, the <laughs> we take the get correlate data function. And this is what is run um, every, every day because we again we can define a cron job as the triggering event and then we can use this command here serverless deploy um, to deploy the function to aws and uh, this is great because serverless does all of the creates all the resources and all the network configurations for you so it's very convenient if you have worked with aws in the AWS console before, you know that this is, can be quite frustrating. Um, yeah. So summary of that. Um, no, okay. I'm already over time. I'm very sorry. I will um, uh, take, uh, go a bit faster. Okay, this is the summary. Uh, so we have exchanged uh, the AWS Lambda, uh, the Raspberry Pi for the Lambda function. We still use crone as always and uh, now we also have a way to know about um, when something doesn't work okay now finally uh, for the newest version where i again i used the raspberry pi and um, uh, what i changed is that i now have i also collect data from slack for our slack workspace i collect how many people are in there and instead of a database, I use uh, GitHub to store the data. So actually the data is now on GitHub. You can also um, read it in later and maybe do some plotting if you want. There's a lot of missing data in, in it. So um, yeah, it won't look as good, but uh, yeah, it's now on GitHub. Um, and I uh, also use something called GitHub Actions to have this uh, notification functionality. But yeah, the main work I did was uh, on uh, rewriting this code here. So um, yeah, the cron job, I still use uh, a cron job. It kind of looks the same as before. 
Um, this is the very long Crone job. And I set this up with the very helpful Crone R package. So if you have never written a Crone job before, you can use this Crone R package from R and it will set up this command for you. So this is very useful because to get this right, um, this, especially if you're a beginner, this can be quite difficult uh, because yeah, this is not R, it's bash. So yeah, this is a good package, I think. And this is uh, the R script that is run by this um, by this uh, Chrome job. And uh, so um, this R script then runs uh, two other R scripts. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at them first. Uh, so we still have um, yeah this here are the two files that we need um, that are run. Um, then this is the file where I set up the Chrome job, and here is the data stored. And um, yeah, let's have a look at the um, at the new get daily analytics. You remember the big um, messy file now is only 28 lines long, and um, but I mean it's a trick because <laughs> all the data collection um, is uh, done in this function here. So maybe I'll make it a bit a bit bigger. Um, yeah, so all the data collection is done in this SM counts collect data function. So um, yeah, what's what's that? Um, this function. Uh, now I um, I think I messed up. That's no. <laughs> to get back to my slides. Ah, very good. Um, yeah, what's this function? And that's actually. Um, from a package that I wrote. Um, so I decided to put all the functionality related to the data collection into its own little package. And uh, this might sound very like a much of work, especially if you are more of an R beginner, you might think, oh gosh, she, uh, she wrote her own R package. That's, that's crazy, right? Um, but um, writing R packages is actually not, not super difficult because there's a lot of good tools around. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I think it, it forces you to write functions, which is always good, especially if you want to reuse your code later. You, um, it's a good idea to write functions. And if you put them into an R package, you can you also have the benefit that you can install it um, on different, I don't know, projects. And yeah, I'm a big fan of R packages. Um, so this is how it looks like. And we have, uh, I wrote a function for Slack, I wrote a function for Facebook, I wrote a function for Twitter, wrote a function for the newsletter. And um, I mean, the functions themselves are uh, then a bit more complicated, but on the high level, it looks quite easy, right? And uh, yeah, I, uh, so the package um, is something that is now new in, in this project. So um, big advantage, as I said, I can reuse that. I can um, define the dependencies in the description file. Um, I can install it from GitHub, um, that's also good. And uh, yeah, um, one big thing that is now um, much better is that I use environment variables to store all the credentials, which is um, a better way to handle this um, than before. Um, Regarding the storage, uh, I said that I use uh, Git for storing the data now, so no database um, needed. And I use, um, because I on Raspberry Pi, I don't have access to RStudio, I used the GERT package. There's also Git2R, which is uh, the older one. Um, but uh, yeah, I found that didn't work so well with authentication and um, GERT works quite nicely. So yeah. Uh, git pull, git add, git commit, git push. And then, um, yeah, this is um, the command to read the data from GitHub. Um, you I will maybe post it in the chat. Could be fun for everyone who has a git um, open anyway. Um, you can, it should work, hopefully. Um, and then I will probably skip that. If someone is interested in that, um, uh, you can maybe ask a question. So how I worked um, out the notification part, um, it's a bit technical probably, 
And I, uh, yeah, if someone is interested in that, you can ask uh, the question and I will explain it. But yeah, I will skip it for now. Um, summary, um, yeah, we, the Raspberry Pi is back. Um, quite happy about that. Uh, still use Crone. Crone is very essential, as you have seen, to things like that. Um, and I now use GitHub and um, GitHub Actions. Yeah, comparing with the old version, um, yeah, the functionality is uh, better separated um, through the package. Um, it's hopefully more stable. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not so sure about Git as a storage option because it was quite tricky to work out uh, the authentication on the Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm quite proud of the GitHub action hack. Um, that, uh, that was quite good. Um, yeah, and um, what I still need to do, this is not uh, that it's bad. Uh, a friend mentioned to me that this might be confusing. So the X doesn't mean that it's bad. Um, it means I still have to do that. So I still have to add better error handling and of course tests to my R package. And um, alternatives, I will also leave them on the slides. You, uh, you can have a look at that just some more brainstorming, how you can start do stuff like that. Um, in summary, I want to say that um, you can learn a lot from doing such a, such a project. Um, you uh, will probably learn more to, uh, to work more with, with Git, with uh, Chrome jobs, which are essential, um, SSH, SCP, uh, basics of networking. So you have to know how to connect to your Raspberry Pi, for example. Uh, so this is something that you will learn. Uh, you will learn about uh, the command line because typically once you have set up your Raspberry Pi, you, um, you interact with it through the terminal. So um, you do something like this and then you are on your Raspberry Pi and then you navigate around uh, with, for example, something like that. Um, so this is something that you will learn and you will also learn to write code that works outside of our studio, which is an outside of your own machine, which is uh, can be quite challenging, I have to say. And uh, on Raspberry Pis, uh, I think they're great if you um, if you want to have want to get some more experience with like cloud and uh, virtual machines and stuff like that, but if you feel like you need a transition thing, right? Because the great thing is that you can plug it into your monitor, you can use it like a normal PC. Um, yeah, but please make sure, I think that you will have a use case beyond like your first idea because it's such a shame if they are just sitting on, on your um, shelf. Uh, so make sure that you have some other use cases for them. And yeah, I think that's um, the don't buy one is um, yeah, if you don't have enough use cases and if you don't want to work outside of our studio, if you don't have the time to do that, um, then also not worth it probably. Yeah, and if you have a uh, project ideas that require a lot of computing power or super complex uh, R setups, probably also not so well equipped. Okay, then I'll leave you with the links um, I can copy the link to the slides maybe, so you can uh, have to figure out our exit full screen. Okay, um, but yeah, uh, that's it from my side, I think. Um, Thank yeah, you. Um, I Thanks. Can also uh, correlate. Yeah, sorry, just to do the advertising. Please, please. Yeah, follow, cor follow me on for correlate, correlate, and if you want to reach out, you can write me an email as well. Yeah, so please um, uh, use all the uh, information, so the Twitter, the email, or, uh, or the site. I think um, that was really interesting. I think it was more detailed as I first uh, see it. So thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> it, it was quite, uh, I wasn't uh, aware of all these packages and I also agree with some uh, some points that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the ones with, uh, uh, with the package, I think this is uh, great for uh, start uh, using functions, but also considering uh, building packages or uh, running them from a package. And I think it's also 
quite innovative, you know, to, to use R on Raspberry Pi. I haven't heard uh, too many uh, scientists talking about that. Maybe there are, but they are not talking. I don't know. Uh, still, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I, I have some friends. I mean, I think Fabio is, is here, right? Um, so I know some people who are working with... Um, ah, okay. With, uh, yeah, let me... I don't know. <laughs> there, um, I, uh, let me go into my mentions real quick. Um, because, yeah, then... So they are collecting data on TikTok, for example. Ah, yes, yes, I, I, uh, I read you today. Saw that? Yes, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, I think yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. I, I want to check... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really curious. Yeah, I mean, if, uh, if Fabio is in, in this um, uh, meetup, so if you want, he can maybe oh. talk a bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, that's super cool because I, I, uh, I read uh, this, uh, uh, this morning about uh, your package and I was uh, amazed. <laughs> And uh, I've also read on LinkedIn some people uh, shared you over the, the network. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well that's, that's the beauty yeah. of LinkedIn. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so I would just say, I mean, a part of the praise for this setup that you just see on your screen right now, that shouldn't be directed at me. That's certainly Ben who did this. He created this little farm. He's actually writing a package. So th those are, yeah, those are just uh, Fabio, just to explain yeah, like what, what, one, what? two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Raspberry Pis linked uh -huh. together, collecting the data for the TikTok project, right? Yes, yeah, we were scraping um, yeah. political TikTok basically, and we've written the preprint uh, <laughs> on some of that data, um, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I would say. Uh, I'm not. I'm not responsible for the Raspberry Pi part of this, uh, which is certainly what would. Oh. And uh, <laughs> he, he could. He would, he would actually also would have a lot of ideas here. I would say I'm just like fascinated by this. But uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but yeah. Uh, so there are some people doing real stuff with Raspberry Pis beyond just collecting like one data point per day. Yeah. And one thing I'll, I'll add is that that Ben is developing our package that is. Um, it's mm -hmm. called Pi R, and the idea is to connect to the ah, Pi package R. through R packages. Yeah, so it's is it Pi already... R. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's public yet though. <laughs> so okay, this you have is to invite me. Thing maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you won't find it like this. I would like it's it's just very small right now. It's internal use. Okay, basically. but it's pretty cool. Like a lot of the things you just showed, um, like writing. Uh, uh, like actual bash uh, script, right? You don't, you don't have to do that, mm -hmm. right? You can do it from within the R package that executes it in the back end. So yeah. that's yeah. what I use working on, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to. Okay, yeah, <laughs> thanks Thanks for co uh, yeah, yeah. coming on the spot here. Sorry. Yeah. No, maybe, this, um, yeah. maybe you can come, yeah. uh, you know, for one meetup and uh, uh, tell us about the, this new package that you are so famous on TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, I can talk a little bit about the package. Yeah, um, uh, I'm. I'd be happy to. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's connect afterwards yeah, then. <laughs> yeah, please connect. Um, yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, any? There please. was a question. Of, yeah. No, I'm just reading the questions from the chat. Um, yeah. So this is so a time for Twitter questions box. for for you both. So. Uh, I scheduled the event. I will stop the recording for now. So, we'll um, 